Welcome to another video on random variables. In this video, we're gonna focus on transforming random variables. Now, I really hope you pay attention to another video on combining random variables, because there's a huge difference between those two topics. But anyway, in this video, we're gonna focus on transforming random variables. Now, first, let's talk about the mean and standard deviation of a random variable. Hopefully, you already know what the mean and standard deviation of a random variable represent, but if not, here's a quick reminder. The mean of a random variable is the average value we would expect in the long run after many, many repetitions of the random variable occurring. But what value the random variable actually takes on can vary, so of course a standard deviation comes with that mean. Now, how do you find the mean and standard deviation of a random variable? Again, I really hope you've already know how to do this and I hope you watched my amazing video on the topic, but let's quickly recall how to do it. But remember, proper symbols are super important. When we're talking about the mean of many, many, many repetitions, we're assuming we're looking at all of them. So we're gonna use the mean of the random variable X and the standard deviation is going to be sigma. Remember, these are not sample statistics. No, that would be X bar for the mean or S for standard deviation. We're looking at many repetitions and that's why we're using the mu and the sigma. All right, now if it's a discrete random variable, we have two pretty nice formulas for the mean and standard deviation. But remember, you have to be given the probability distribution for a, ran a discrete random variable. A probability distribution is simply a list of all of your outcomes and your probabilities. Here are those formulas, which again, please watch that other video over means and standard deviations. If you are a continuous random variable, well, there's no formulas. I just have to give you the values. So in this case, that's, yeah, the mean's 1,525, the standard deviation is 165. If it's continuous, there's no way that you could calculate those values other than just literally doing it a million times and finding your mean. Geometric and binomial have their own set of formulas to find the mean and the standard deviation, and what those values represent are very, very different, so please make sure you understand that. Now, I know it may seem like I'm flying through these formulas. That's because I have another video for calculating the mean and standard deviation of a random variable. I'm just reminding you, because what I want to do in this video is focus on transforming a random variable. Now, when we transform a random variable, we are simply converting the units of the problem to a new unit. Some examples are we're transforming the feet to meters, the feet to miles, pounds to kilograms, seconds to minutes, or maybe number of to price of. So I have the number of trinkets and then I have the price of trinkets. So I'm just converting. So transforming is converting. So to transform either the mean or the standard deviation, all you have to do is multiply by the conversion factor. We're literally just taking a mean in a certain unit and transforming it to a new unit. It's so unbelievably easy. And it's simple for both mean and standard deviation. So let's do an example with a continuous random variable. So let's just say that the mean and standard deviation for X, the weight of a random rhinoceros, is 1,525 pounds and 165 pounds respectively. Now, if you're unsure what I mean by respectively, it just simply says, I said the mean and standard deviation are 1,525 and 165. That just means the mean is the first number, the standard deviation is the second number. Okay, so here it is, here it is. And I told you if it's continuous, I'm gonna give you the mean and the standard deviation. But remember, this is measured in pounds. So these would be LBSs, LBSs, pounds. What if I wanted to convert these numbers, transform these numbers to kilograms? Well, all I gotta do is multiply by the conversion factor. Now, maybe you didn't know this, but I'm telling you, one, you could probably look this up on Google in a second, one pound is 0.4536 kilograms. So if I wanna multiply this and I wanna convert this mean to pounds to kilograms, I'm simply gonna say, all right, well, I want the pounds to cancel, so I'm gonna put one pound in the denominator and I'm gonna put the 0 0.4536 kilograms in the numerator. That way my unit of pounds cancels and my new unit will be kilograms. Grab a calculator, 1,525 times 0.43 four, five, three, six, excuse me, is 691.74 kilograms. Oh my gosh, seriously? That's all? That's all transforming is? Uh, yeah. All right, now let's do the standard deviation. This time we're going to turn the pounds of standard deviation into the kilograms. So all we're gonna do is multiply again by the one pound is gonna go in the denominator because we want that unit of pounds to cancel. 
the 0.4536 kilograms goes on top. And I'm just going to grab my calculator, 165 times 0.4536 gives me 74.844 kilograms. So my new mean for the random variable in kilograms and my new standard deviation for kilograms are right here. I mean, come on, it's that easy. All right, let's look at a different problem. So this was a discrete random variable. Remember, this was, um, well, maybe you don't remember because it was a different video. Maybe you didn't watch it. But this was um, T, the number of ornaments that Sally sells in an hour at a craft show. So she either sells one, two, three, four, or five ornaments. And there are the probabilities making this discrete. So those are the probabilities for the different outcomes of the random variable T. So here is me using those formulas, but please do not forget, you could also use your calculator. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, please go back and watch the video over means and standard deviations of a random variable. But here we have the outcomes and the probabilities to find the mean. We multiply each outcome by its probability, add them all together, and we get a mean of 2.45 ornaments. Simple. Standard deviation, a little bit more complicated process. Here it is. I'm following the formula I gave you earlier, but hopefully you watch the video on means of standard deviation and you'll know exactly how I got this 1.6161. 1, 1. All right, now here's the problem. This is the transformation. She sells the ornaments for $12 a piece. How much money does she expect to make per hour? So right now, the mean is in the number of ornaments. She sells 2.45 Orn uh, mints. But what I'm telling you is that every one ornament is worth $12. So if I want to convert this to money, all I have to do is multiply by $12. Every one of those ornaments is worth $12. So 2.45 ornaments is what she expects to sell in an hour times by 12 is $29.40. So she expects to sell 2.45 ornaments per hour, and if she does that, she will make an expected $29.40. It's simple. And you might say, well, wait a minute. She can't make that much money. It's an average. So uh, listen, most times she's going to sell two ornaments. That's what's most common, right? That's $24. But you know, sometimes she's going to sell five. That would be $60. So it happens. Sometimes she's only going to sell one. That's $12. But in the long run, if we were allowed this to repeat hour after hour after hour, she would on average sell 2.45 ornaments, which is going to earn her $29.40 on average. What about the standard deviation? Well, same thing. 1.161 ornaments. And we're going to convert that to dollars. We're going to transform that to dollars. All we got to do is multiply by the fact that every one ornament is worth $12. 1.161 times 12 gives me a standard deviation of $13. And I actually am going to round that to 932. I'm going to round that to 93 cents. That way it just makes sense with dollars. So again, come on, how easy was that? It's really, really simple. So on average, Average, she expects to make $29.40 an hour. That's a pretty good wage. And you know what? Sometimes she sells more ornaments or less ornaments, so she could make even more money or even less money. And that's where the standard deviation comes in. But if all you're doing is transforming a random variable to a different unit, all you got to do is multiply. Like, come on, it's not that hard. Let's look at a binomial example. Okay, so 9% of people have O negative blood. Let X equal the number of people with O negative blood in a group of 30. So I'm given the probability of success P, 0.09. I'm given a set number of people, 30, and X is how many people in that sample have O negative blood. Well, if we were to look at a group of 30, 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 if we were to continue to look at groups of 30 in the long run, what would we expect? How many people on average should have type O negative blood in a group of 30? The formula for binomial that I showed you earlier to find the mean is very simple. It's N times P. 30 times 0.09 is 2.7. So in the long run, we expect an average of 2.7 people out of 30 to have O negative blood. 
But of course, there's a standard deviation that comes with that as well. The formula for that is a giant square root of n. I know that says 20, but it should be 30. My math is correct. I'm sorry for the typo there. 30 times 0.09 times 1 minus 0.09, which is, of course, my failure rate, 0.91. That's 91% of people who don't have the type O blood, equals 1.567 people. Okay, now here comes the transformation. Since O negative blood is kind of rare, a blood drive is actually willing to give people that have O negative blood an incentive of $15 if they have it. So if they test your blood and it's O negative, they'll give you an extra $15 trying to encourage you to participate. So if 30 people are in line to donate, how much money would the organizers expect to give out? Well, all we're going to do is say, listen, we expect there to be 2.7 people. But if each of those people is going to be given $15, then we're going to multiply that 2.7 by $15. 2.7 times 15 is $40.50. So we expect on average 2.7 people out of 30 to have type O negative blood. And if we give those people $15 each, in the long run, we would expect to give out $40.50 per group of 30. What about the standard deviation, you may ask? Well, that's just as simple. 1.56 people, once again, each of them is going to get that $15 for participating if they have O negative blood. So we're gonna take the 1.567 multiplied by 15, and we get $23.51. I'm only okay writing the two decimals since it's money. All right, pretty easy, right? Like, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Again, it's so easy to transform or convert, I guess is another word, random variables. Let's do one more example. A game is played where a player earns five points if they make a correct decision. Okay, cool. Let W equal a random variable for the number of correct decisions a player makes. So the mean is 12.5. So that means when a player plays this game, on average, they make 12.5 correct decisions. So the average for W is 12.5 correct decisions. Okay, that, that, that makes sense, right? Like one Now you might say, well, you can't even make a half of a decision. You can make 12, you can make 13. I get that, but what this comes from is if we have a person play the game, maybe they get nine correct decisions. Play again, 10 correct decisions. Play again, 15 correct decisions. So over the course of many, many, many plays, on average, the person makes 12.5 correct decisions. But come on, it deviates. Some people might make more correct decisions. Some people might make less. So the standard deviation of W is 3.4 correct decisions. Again, all of that information was given to you in this kind of little table. But here comes my question. What is the mean and standard deviation for the total points earned? Well, that's where I got to go back to the question and see that it says, for every correct decision, you earn five points. Yeah. So the mean for the number of points, and you know what, maybe we're going to use a P for points or something like that, right? Like, you know, we could do that. So the conversion would be um, for every one correct decision, you earn five points. So for every one W, W is a correct decision. That's what I said. W is the number of correct decisions. You earn five points. So maybe I'm going to call this the mean number of points. Well, oh my gosh, like I hope that you've already in your head figured out how to do this. You're just going to say, well, if I make 12.5 correct decisions on average and every one of those gains me five points, I multiply by five and I get 62.5 points. So 12.5 uh, is the correct decisions, but every one correct decision gets me five points. Oh my gosh, come on, it's easy, right? The standard deviation for the points, same thing, 3.4 correct decisions times five points for each one of those correct decisions. 3.4 times five is 17 points. Just make sure you have the proper unit there. So at the end of this video, I, I really hope you're like, wow, you really just taught me how to convert numbers? Yeah, that's how easy it is. A random variable could be transformed to a new unit. Um, all you have to do is transform it. Follow the procedure to change units by multiplying by that unit conversion factor, and it's really that simple. All right, probably too long of a video for this easy of a topic, but I want to make sure I explained it in detail. 
All right, see you in the next video. And if you don't know what a mean and standard deviation is of a random variable, you better go watch my other videos. See you later.